Hello Internet, James Allen from Out of 8 PC Game Reviews, and due to popular demand, based on a poll conducted through my Twitter account, today we're looking at Strategic War in Europe, a follow-up slash direct copy of Time of Fury by the same developer, Wastelands Interactive. Uh, takes place during World War II, where you control one or several countries, uh, taking place in the conflict. So, to show off some of the features, uh, start a new game here. In 1941, and one neat thing is that, just like in Time of Fury, which there are a lot of similarities with, as you'll see if you are familiar with that one, uh, you can control one or several countries, so I'm going to choose a couple of the minor-ish Axis nations. So Italy, Hungary, Romania, and Bulgaria uh, to control. Now you notice you can do play by email, which is pretty cool. Uh, the way it's set up is each turn is a month. So Germany gets to go first. So we'll watch the AI go through all the turns. You'll notice that I've, if you watched my earlier video of this game, I figured out how to turn off the AI battle notification, so I can sit here and actually just watch uh, Germany invade Russia instead of having to press OK for every single battle, which is really, really annoying. So I'm glad I found that out. So, we'll just sit here and wait for some Russians to die, and then it'll eventually be our turn in the game. The significant difference between this and Time of Fury is that this is a lot bigger scale. All of the things in here are core and army level as opposed to division level, which is what it was in Time of Fury, which I frankly found to be really unwieldy. So I actually like this setup better uh, in Strategic War in Europe. I think it's easier to handle. There's less units to keep track of. The map's, you know, smaller because it's at a bigger scale. It's actually easier to keep track of things. The downside is, of course, it's the same game, basically. This is Time of Fury at a bigger scale. So, if you have Time of Fury, I don't really see a reason to get this. Basically, now it's my turn. Uh, if you don't have Time of Fury, uh, and you're deciding between these two games, I would actually prefer this one over Time of Fury. Like I said, it's easier to control and all that stuff. So... Let me see if I can figure out. I am Axis now, so I guess I can declare war on people. Uh, check out some of these. It's borders. Ownership. Eh. Map mode. Air superiority. Uh, so, a couple things to note about most of the uh, the interface here. All the things are along the hide that along the side. This is a list of all your units. Don't have anything to deploy. You can sort it by strength, uh, the number of action points they have remaining, their supply level, what type of unit they are. Notice everything's either core or army level. Their actual level, whether you can upgrade it, whether you can promote it whether it has a commander, whether you can redeploy using rail, uh, whether it can be reinforced, airborne assault, troop transport, landing craft, all that stuff. So I think the first thing I'm going to do, I can't upgrade anything, but I can't promote. So there's something that can be promoted right there. So you see all the actions are down here on the bottom, supply level, sign a commander, disband the unit, stuff like that. So, let me see who my best units are. And then assign commanders to those units. Looks like this one right here. 
Uh, so we will assign a commander. You. There we go. Gives little bonuses to the units. Something else we have here. That was that guy that I just assigned it to. Army Corps, Infantry Corps. Unfortunately, this takes up a lot of real estate on the uh, screen, so you can't actually see where these things are. Eh, which is kind of, you know, not terribly helpful. So I'm just going to kind of pick a couple of these guys. Notice the strength went up now that I put that commander in there. Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of pick people, I think. Sure. Oh, can't even do it. Must not be active or something. There you go. That's good for that. So I'm assuming... I'm gonna be helping with Russia. I wish there was a way you could show like who you're at war with if you don't remember who was at war with people in World War II. And I guess you don't deserve to be playing the game. Let's see if there's any promotions here. Mechanized Corps. Yeah. Which uses production points up here, so I really can't do anything else that turn. Uh, one thing I do like that they did with the graphics, I actually like these counters a lot better than the military graphics they had before. Uh, it's a lot easier to understand the attributes here. Uh, the numbers on them are the strength on the left and then the movement points on the right. And then the boxes mean they can do like, a, you know, attack multiple units at a time. So, I think that's pretty uh, useful. And also, I kind of like these this hand-drawn graphics here, where the you know surrounding the units and showing where they can move. That's a nice little touch. So I guess we'll uh, just kind of move some people over. I don't see any dastardly allies near us. So. Yeah, they must be fixed. Oh no, that's German. That's why. Can't upgrade. Move some people around. Italy's not very exciting yet, I guess. And this is Vichy France, I guess. You can send uh, airplanes on recon missions. Not that there aren't any enemy units around for me to do that to, actually, but it is useful. Oh, that was dumb. So it's not very exciting for Italy. Let's see if we can, when we get one of these countries, we can actually start attacking people. So I'm just gonna end my turn. Which I think is that, yeah. Yeah, Romania, baby. Let's do this. A lot easier to manage here. You can actually go and like control nations from opposite sides too in the same game, which is neat. Uh, no upgrades or any commanders or anything, so they're just kind of stuck. So, uh, I'm going to attack this unit with two units. And I destroyed him. There we go. Uh, and I'll probably do the same thing with that. No, maybe not. Oh yeah, because he already double attacked. That's what the blue dot means. The d that means you can double attack, but he already did it, so he can't really do it anymore. Let me have him recon. Oh, that. 
you can set the window to close up at any time. Ah, destroyed. He's down here anyway. Is that Italy? No, that's uh, Bulgaria, actually. Need to know my geography. Uh, that's pretty good. I'll show some other things on here. Uh, purchase units here. Corps and armies again. And with the better nations, there's different levels you can research. And fighters and bombers and all the typical naval stuff. And then the research is really kind of disappointing. You just kind of assign money into different categories and it automatically upgrades. There isn't really much to it. It's not as extensive as in, like, Hearts of Iron or something like that. Getting a little hungry. Time to attack. Ha ha ha. I don't even know if that's a good thing to do. <laughs> Might actually be killing myself even though he has more strength or whatever. You have to actually recon before you can attack. So you actually have to kind of have two different plane things. Uh, to bomb, because you have to recon first and then you bomb second. So, yeah, well, that's pretty much it there. All the Nazis are balking my way. Bunch of jerks. So, maybe I'll be it for hungry. I wonder if I'm at war with them. I guess not, since I can't move into their territory. Very dramatic music for me moving my troops around. Creeper, do a couple more times. But you can get the general gist of what's going on. I haven't seen any problems with the AI during my time playing the uh, preview versions or the release versions, so it's good. And it's played by email too, so you can have a lot of repetitive sound effects as you can hear. AI is using, uh, attacking with several units. That's how you can take down the enemy armies. You just surround them. You can attack them with like, you know, four different cores at a time and take them down. It's like law and order. I think that's what they stole the sound from. Yeah, he's doing reinforcements. Enjoy your point oh eight per e. Oh, oh. Finally. I don't think I can do anything now though. 
Uh, see, that's Vichy France, so I can't really attack them. That's too bad. That's... I didn't pick an exciting time for Italy, I guess. They're not really attacking anybody. The Americans aren't coming yet. So, 62 production points if you can afford anything with that. They've got level 2 unlock, not really anything good though. Really need to get at least a mechanized core. Armored cores are, you know, 576. And then when you queue them up, you can deploy them in any friendly city. So it's really flexible. That way you don't have to do an electric capital or something. Yeah, they're all, I'm all getting blocked. It's really, these nations are actually more interesting right now. Romania. faster moving along rail lines. Bear before the wonderful Romanian army. Which is actually kind of an Austrian accent, but that's good. Purposeless recon, because I don't actually have any... I guess with the fighters, the fighters are just for, like, guarding against the enemy plane, so they're not really going to do any bombing anyway. have kind of bad units to be honest. Territory, aren't they? I'm gonna die, aren't I? Hmm. If this was an actual game I was trying to win, I don't think I would have attacked them. Like that, I would have waited for Germany to get more of their attention and then kind of move my troops in. So the AI is pretty good. Smart. Artificially intelligent enough for me.
can get a level 2 mechanized core limit. Bye. It takes two turns. Two months. See if anybody needs any reinforcements. Oh. I didn't even know I was there. Alright. Reinforce. Oh, that one. And you spend the same production points you use to build new troops. So, max it out. There is a button to cycle between your troops, and I totally don't remember what that button is. To, you know, tab through everything. But, I, you know, I don't remember. Needs to be a thing on the interface for it. This is just to switch countries up there, those guys. There's Italy's research. Yeah. They're loving the Navy and aircraft, I guess. Alright, we'll see if I can make some headway with Romania here. The green means you can attack still, and the red means you can't attack after you move. That's what that's about. And you can take planes and rebase them at friendly cities, so if I took Odessa, I could move my plane up. Uh, which is nifty. I really kind of take them. It is 1941, so not really surprising. You can see the Germans have like super crazy strengths, like 37 strength rating, which is absolutely ridiculous. 23, 29. They get like super high bonuses in the beginning of the game, and then they get uh, worse as the game wears on. So I think that's fairly entertaining. That's about as far as I want to move those guys. <laughs> Move some hungry up. Join the war sometime. Bulgaria is just hanging out. Hey Istanbul, how you doing? Italy has a really small military, too, I must say. No wonder they lost. I'm actually more interested in playing as Romania right now, to be honest. Let's see. I can move one space and still attack. I 
get, yeah, the green box, I guess, means they can attack still. That's exactly what that means. Trying to get a Dessa. Not too much. Not enough. So I can reinforce all of my four units I have. <laughs> right there. That's them. I'm gonna bring some of the Hungarian forces up. Still just kind of sitting there, not doing anything. Supply method basically, you have to be connected to cities through rail lines, uh, but it's all automatically taken care of. It's nice to be doing it. Basically, you just have to make sure your units just don't get encircled. just around any of the cities and it's here. There he is. Takes him a couple turns after they're deployed to uh, get to full strength. See on here on their unit description it says where they get supplies from. For example this guy gets 25 from him. Whatever that is. I haven't seen what it is. No well, thanks for the supplies. Anyway where are we going? Odessa here. Problem is I'm taking on a mechanized unit with infantry, so it's not really gonna be too good. It seems losing not causing any damage. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Well, if I had some military, you know, strength, it'll work. So that's a quick look at strategic war in Europe. It's out now. Came out uh, Friday. Fifteen bucks, so reasonable price. Uh, like I said before, if I thought Simon Fury was a little bit too huge of a game, so this is a lot more manageable. If you like the turn-based World War II large-scale strategy things, this is one you can take a look at. Uh, until next time, bye.